Welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I'm going to be doing the Look for Less Challenge that is hosted by Yami from the Latina Next Door, and I will have her channel linked down below in my description box. So for this challenge, you have to take um, something that you find that you really, really want and do it for less. So I made over this oak table into this whitewashed, beautiful farmhouse table. The inspiration tables were way higher than I could afford or would want to spend personally on a dining table. So the one that I chose in particular was this dining table. And I love the lines of it. I didn't exactly like the metal pieces that were on the edge, those black pieces, but this whitewashed wood finish is what I was going for. And the original is going for about $780 and that was on Wayfair.com. But this table I got for free from my brother. And I'm going to start off by doing a flat white paint and I use Rust-Oleum 2 times coverage paint. I love that brand, it works really well. But I bought four cans of spray paint. Three of them were the flat white um, by Rust-Oleum. And then I also bought one extra one that was a white um, gloss enamel, and you'll see that towards the end of the video. But I just went ahead and spray painted the bottom part of the table with this flat paint. It kind of has the same effect as chalk paint and it does stick really well like a primer because it is flat. So I didn't have to do any other prep work other than cleaning the table really well. So I just went around and covered all of that bottom part. I wasn't worried about getting any on the top of the table because I'm going to completely sand off the finish on the top of this table. So my supplies for sanding down the top of this table is my 3M respirator mask. Now I really do need to buy some new filters for that thing, but it still works well enough for sanding and painting. And I start off with a 120 grit sandpaper in a five inch round um, orbital sander size. So this orbital sander I got for like less than $20 at Harbor Freight and it's just some random um, brand, nothing fancy but you just Velcro them on. And then the second sandpaper I have is 220, and that will be for the final sanding after I get the finish off. So I'm gonna start with the 120 grit and use that, that Velcro, and you're just gonna line it up on your orbital sander with the holes that are there. So I usually line up two of the holes and then the rest of it lines up well enough. It's not always gonna be perfect, and I don't wanna waste time getting this exactly perfect. It's not that necessary. So as long as they are breathing, those holes are breathing, it is okay. Now I'm just gonna go for it and sand off this finish that is on the table. So when you are trying to get a finish off of a table, you wanna use a pretty gritty sandpaper. So you're gonna use the lower number sandpapers. If I had 80 grit, I probably would have used 80 grit instead of 120, but I didn't have it on hand. The difference is it's going to leave your surface feeling much more um, rough. So you do always need to go back over with a soft like 220 grit or even a larger number than 220 to make sure that your surface is very smooth. You don't want a really rough dining table. It makes it really hard to clean the surface off. So start with a rougher grit sandpaper and work your way towards 220 or higher. And then I just use a brush that I got from the Dollar Tree to get the large majority of the sawdust and wood dust off of there and then I went over it with the 220 grit. So this is me just doing the uh, one single big pass over the whole thing with 220 grit to smooth out that wood finish. And I go over it again with that brush, get all the dust off. And then the next product that I'm going to use on here, you're probably thinking like, well, why that? Why is she gonna do anything different? It looks really good the way it is. But this next product is what's going to give that wood the whitewash look. If I were to have left the table the way it is now, it would have ended up getting that orange color again because oak just tends to do that. Um, the way it is right now is unfinished. So yes, it looks awesome and it doesn't look like it has that orange tone to it. But as soon as I were to put any kind of clear coat on here, it would get that orange color right away. So I just take a round brush, and you can really use any type of paintbrush for this. I even think that you could probably use a rag for this type of application, but it's just easier to use these round brushes. They have really good coverage, and mine is a Waverly brand one, super cheap from Walmart. But this liming wax was um, $23 and some change off Amazon, 
and the spray paints all together came to be about $14. So with the spray paint being $14, I used about $3 worth of sandpaper. That brings my total up to $17. Then the lime wax was, uh, we'll, we'll round up and say $25, but I only used like less than a quarter of this can. So that's about $6 worth of this lime wax product. So now we've brought the total up to $23 for this project. Not bad at all compared to $780. <laughs> and if you can't find a free dining table, which sometimes it's really hard to find things like this, especially when you're looking for it, I swear, you can always find stuff when you don't need it, but when you do need it, you can't find it anywhere. But even if you had bought it secondhand, maybe for like $50 or so, it still would have been a really great price for the product you're gonna come out with at the end. Here's how it looks after applying that white wax on there. It, um, it, it kind of looks a little bit blotchy, but that's just because it's soaking in and it does level itself out quite a bit. If not, you can always go back over with 220 grit sandpaper and sand by hand in the spots that are too white so that it is more of an even finish. Now, this table has drawers in it and I didn't like the black corner pieces that were on the $780 table from Wayfair, so I have... Um, bought in the past a big pack of 10 drawer pulls that are the cup pull style, you'll see right here. And so they were about 70 cents a piece uh, on Amazon in that 10 pack. So I used two of them, which brings it to a little less than $2. And then um, that brings our total up to now $25 for this project. But <laughs> I wanna show you guys a kind of funny fail that I had while trying to put these on. Usually you can just screw these right on to whatever surface you're putting them onto, but this oak was really hard, and these screws are not meant to push through hardwood without stripping the heads off. The heads are not very sturdy, and I apologize for zooming into my arm hair here, <laughs> but I couldn't see what the camera was seeing. So you'll get the idea here in just a second, I'll show you, but I had to go get a drill with a regular drill bit on there and drill in a little bit first so that my screws could go in without stripping the head of the screw. And like I said, usually I don't have to do this step, but if you're um, working on a project and this happens where you can't get the screw in and the head starts to strip, stop right away and pre-drill the hole a little bit before putting it back in. Don't pre-drill all the way through because then the screw won't have anything to stick to but pre-drill just a tiny bit, just enough to get inside to that more soft wood interior. And I just screwed these right in and it was so much easier after doing that. So the clear coat is the final product that I'm going to be using for this project. And I have never used this triple thick brand or style before. And I really wanted to give it a try because I like the idea of having to only apply one coat because it is as thick as three coats. And since this is a dining table, I wanted a surface that you can wipe down with any cleaning product and it won't destroy the finish of your wood. And this product says that it is a soap and water wash down. You, can, you don't have to use any special wood products and it protects the wood underneath. So I used this triple thick and I actually really liked it. It's by Verathane. Um, it is a little more difficult to apply if you live in a dry climate like I do because it dries really quickly and gets kind of tacky while you're brushing it. Now, for the second part of this project, I got this bench for free also. Somebody was giving it away. It had some blemishes on it and it was not perfect and they just wanted to get rid of it. So I did the same method as before. I just used the spray paint and um, I started with flat spray paint on this. And for this one, I actually went over it with that second, um, spray paint and I'll show you that later. But I spray painted it with the flat first and then let that dry and then came back over and started sanding the seat part of the bench because the other brand of spray paint that I'm going to use is an enamel and enamel takes a really long time to dry. So I didn't wanna to have to wait for that to dry before sanding. And the reason I would have had to have waited is because all that dust would have got stuck inside the finish and ruined the whole project. So I didn't want to be out there all night long and I had to time the project to where I could have it finished and drying overnight. And here's just a close up of what it looks like when you sand off the finish. This bench I have owned in the past and it actually is a bench from Walmart. 
and I was surprised at how great the wood was underneath the finish that it had on it. Okay, so now that I've completely sanded off that finish, I flipped it over and I'm going to put on the enamel spray paint. This enamel spray paint does take so long to dry, which means that it also is more prone to dripping because it stays very wet as you're spraying it. So you have to be kind of careful not to spray too much on the surface or you'll get those runs and drips. But I went over it, and since I used a flat, this covered so perfectly, and I barely even used half of the can on this one. So really, it wasn't even the full price of the can for this. But I like to round up a little bit just so you guys can see what it would be like if you had to go and buy it yourself, and if you didn't have these products on hand or weren't going to do other projects later. Now I'm going to go back over the seat the same way I did with the top of the table using this lime wax and my round brush, and I just brush it on in a really light coat and that's it. It is so easy to do this whitewash finish and it's so easy to keep it very even opposed to using a whitewash pickling or using a watered down white paint. Watered down white paint does work and it is cheaper but it's very difficult to get an even look with that. This is more like a uh, like a stain and wax together so you can really spread it around and experiment with it and get the coverage that you want without having uh, a lot of blotchiness. I highly recommend this product. And once this is all done I just go back over it with the same clear coat that I use on the top of the table and uh, something I want to mention also is you do need to go in the direction of the wood grain when you're doing the clear coat because it will leave um, brush marks so you can see in which way like in which direction I brushed it on when it dries so if you have it in the direction of the wood grain it just appears as though it is the wood grain it gives it a wood grain texture I guess I could say so we went from a $780 table and no bench and this is just the table price it didn't come with chairs unbelievable how expensive this finish is when you buy it brand new but I only spent like at the very most $27 and that's overestimating it and this is how it turned out let me know what you think in the comments down below and if you want to try doing a whitewash finish I can't wait to hear about what projects you guys have going on and I want to say thank you to Yami from the Latina Next Door thank you so much for always putting on this look for less it's always so much fun seeing what we can do with our creativity to save some money in our wallets and to just have some fun and get together as creators on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And I will see you next time. Bye!